All right, so there it is. There is the Time Attack Wing Core. All right, so part one of the basically DIY carbon rear wing. And to start off, we're gonna start making the core of the wing. Once I have the core, then I can essentially wrap it in carbon, back and bag it down, do all that stuff. So the core is gonna consist of technically four pieces, two pieces of foam and the two um, 3D printed end condition end plates, I'm gonna call them, that'll essentially have threads in them that you can then bolt end plates to. So first things first is we gotta get our foam core pieces cut. I'm using my homemade hot wire cutter that I use, basically made from salvage 3D printer parts. So if you're interested in that, look at the video right before this. But before we get to that, the wing is gonna be 74 inches wide which is why I can't just buy a generic one off of the internet because not many of them come that big and if they are they are thousands of dollars so it's gonna be 74 inches wide there's two inches taken up in the in the 3d printed parts so I need two foam sections at 36 inches to give me 72 inches so that's where we're gonna start with so this is nothing special this is not composite foam because that's very expensive especially in two inch thickness this is your standard pink pink extruded polystyrene that you can get from Home Depot. This stuff is two inches thick. I have it measured out and squared out to the wire at a 36 inch section. So we're gonna print, cut that, cut a second one, and then we're gonna cut the wing profile using the hot wire cutter. So let's get to it. All right, so we're back at the laptop, which is controlling, sending straight Gerbil software to the Arduino. And basically with this, since I'm just cutting it straight up and down and there's no program for it, I just set the feed rate down here and then I'm just going to jog the whole Y axis up and it should just cut right through it. The power supply is on so the hot wire is hot and here we go. So this is the, the cut face that we just cut from there. So as you can see, using the hot wire gives us a very little focus, a very clean finish that's very, very uniform. So this stuff cuts really, really nice with the hot wire cutter, a lot better than, than a knife, which is that surface. So yeah, now I just need one more section and then we can cut the wing profile. Okay, so I've spent some time tuning the, the speed rate for the extruded polystyrene because it's just a lot higher density than like the white expanded polystyrene. And a couple of issues where basically this back edge where it meets during the cut, it gets so thin that it's singeing it. And I think I've done four cuts now and I think I've got it to where I needed to be. I started too fast, then I went too slow. Now it's it's at an acceptable level of singe. So I got the zero set basically as best as I can. So I think now it's just time to give her a shot and see what happens. All right, so we got this set up basically right on the line because it has a little two millimeter feed in rate and I'm biasing it a little bit to this side of the table because I noticed over here, the wire is less consistent. So it's biased to the right just because this is, seems to be the flatter part of the table. And this end is a little bit kittywampus and not super flat, but the wire is straight. 
regardless of where the table is because I've manually set the wire heights to be the same. And it is the same gap all the way across. Okay, so first, first go around wasn't super great. Uh, the feed rate was still a little high, which caused the wire to lag behind and gave some weird kind of rippling effect. As the wire would jump through, it would catch up to where it was and then it would just kind of teeter and rock. Um, although after this is covered with carbon, I don't think the ripples would even be apparent because I'm gonna be using a thick carbon. Um, my laptop did die in the middle of it and of course the wire stopped moving at that point in time. Um, that's obviously not gonna get filled in with carbon. All right, so I decreased the feed rate by 30% and yeah, this came out way better. There's still some micro ripples, but like nothing Nothing like the first one, so we'll probably end up just cutting another one just like this. Same feed rate, same machine parameters, and then this will be the foam cut for the core. All right, it's a new day, shave my face, everything. Um, last part that I needed to finish the end, con like the end plates, end conditions, I'm calling them for rear wing, T-nuts. Um, these are basically standard furniture T-nuts, but they should have a holding capacity and a torque capacity greater than standard brass inserts, like heat set brass inserts. I have those, I've used them plenty of times, but over time, basically repeated use, they can fatigue and essentially the hold will strip and then they'll be able to spin. And these ones shouldn't have that. And these are nothing fancy, they're just plywood T-nuts. So my parts are thick enough to allow something like this to be used. So we're gonna do that. And as far as I know, I've never seen anyone do it before. So it's something new, but it's, there's no reason it shouldn't work. So we're gonna try it. All right, so we just have the, the T-nut threaded onto a long bolt that I can then pass through and pull into the material once it's heated up. So all I'm gonna do is take a heat gun, heat up the insert, heat up the base material just a little bit, let it slide down and pull it through and it'll seat itself. All right, so there they are. Those are fully set into the plastic and seated and they look kind of, they, they look good. They don't look like there's any sort of reason where they wouldn't work. I just threaded a bolt in until it bottomed out and gave it a good, a good turn and it didn't budge at all. So this might be my solution for doing like heavy duty torque resistant inserts into plastic as long as your, your depth and your area allow it. I'm not going to be using any special adhesives for this because at the end of the day the carbon is what's going to hold it all together because the carbon will be a full piece end to end. So I'm just going to use something like Super 77 because that's really good with carbon and epoxy and it doesn't like make it react in any weird way. So I'm just going to use that to stick these together for the time being and then basically just ensure that everything stays straight when I pull vacuum on the, on the wing when I go to cure everything. So. Yeah, we're just gonna quick stick these together and then the core will be finished. So this piece is just one of the, basically the other side of what was cut off, like what in a section like that. And what I can use it for is to actually put the profile in and hold it. And yes, I know there's a little bit of a depth difference there, but that's from that and singeing a little bit during cutting. Um, basically when I do a final trim, I'll make the edge straight no matter what. So even if I cut off a little plastic, it's okay. So all I'm gonna do now is just kind of glue all these things together using this this tray as a way to keep it sort of in the same plane it also keeps it from rocking while I'm trying to press and stick things together 
And all I'm going to really make sure is that the leading edge of all the components stays in a straight line. Alright, here's our two wing halves with our stuff glued on, so now it's just glue them together here and then the core is done. Alright, so there it is. There is the Time Attack wing core all assembled. We got the ends that have our threads in them, our two sections, and that's it. So now, once this is all set and cured, I'm gonna let the, the adhesive dry for a little bit. Then we can work on trying to get this thing wrapped in carbon. So this is the end of step one. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe, like, do the YouTube things. I know it doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out a lot. So yeah, if you like it, stick around. I'll be doing this process from here all the way to it being on the car. So thank you.